New Year's Day 1939 in the town of Luton, England, Philip William Reed, MBE, was born. And what followed was a life of speed and success and often at times controversy. Sadly, on the 6th of October, Phil Reed passed away and the motorcycle racing community lost one of its greatest ever champions. So I thought this would be a good time to do a bit of research into the life of Phil Reed because we often sort of understand the numbers when we look back at champions from the past. You know, we understand the, the Grand Prix wins and the world titles and we get a sense, I guess, of how successful they were, but we don't really connect with the characters like we do with riders from our own era of racing. You can go back and look at the achievements of Agostini, for example, but anyone that's my age is never going to look at that and see what they see when they look at Rossi, despite the win count being higher and things like that. You're always going to love what you see in person when you're watching it at the time. So I really wanted to get a sense of the life and times of Phil Reed as a character as well as as a Grand Prix rider. But before we dive into that character of Phil Reed, I wanted to go over some of those statistics with you because it is a remarkable career. 121 Grand Prix podiums, 52 Grand Prix wins, eight wins at the Isle of Man TT, and eight world titles, including two in the 500cc Premier class. Now, Bit of a caveat here, credited with eight world titles, seven-time Grand Prix world champion. One of the world titles was for a one-off single race event at the Isle of Man, awarding him what they called the Formula One World Championship. So, yeah, there's an eighth world title. So incredible numbers. And along with those numbers, Phil Reed achieved some iconic firsts in Grand Prix racing throughout his career. He was the first rider to win a world championship in all three of the 125, 250, and 500cc classes. He was the first rider to win a world championship on a Yamaha. And he was also the first rider to win a world championship as a privateer rider. And as well as being responsible for some iconic firsts, he was also responsible for an iconic last. He was the last man to ever win a world title for MV Augusta. And I think his achievements will be looked back on as particularly special given the era that he came through and some of the competition he had to deal with. We're talking about guys like Barry Sheen, Kenny Roberts, Mike the Bike Halewood, amongst other many great riders. And it's incredible to think what he could have achieved had some of these guys not been around. It truly was a golden age. But Phil Reed was a natural talent. He bought his first motorcycle, his first road going motorcycle anyway, at the youngest street legal age to buy a motorcycle of 16. And by the time he was 19, he was competing in club races. And just a couple of years later, at the age of 21, he became a Grand Prix winner by winning the Manx Grand Prix. But as I mentioned earlier, there was a bit of controversy throughout Phil Reed's career. In his world championship double winning year of 1968, he had a gentleman's agreement with Yamaha and his teammate Bill Ivey that going into the last race, Ivy would not compete with him earlier in the day for the 125 title, and then Reed would not compete with Ivy later on for the 250 title, and they would win one title each. Instructions, a bit of team instructions there from Yamaha, but it didn't quite go down that way. Uh, as after securing the 125cc title earlier in the day, as agreed, he then went on to battle hard with Bill Ivy for the 250 title later in the day. He won the race, they finished level on points in the World Championship and level on wins as well. And then on a countback system to do with like, I think it was aggregate times and stuff like that, Phil Reed ended up being awarded the world title for the 250s as well. And he did the double over his teammate, Bill Ivey. Yamaha never offered him another factory Grand Prix ride ever again after that. Also controversial at the time was Reed's opinion that the Isle of Man TT should be removed from the uh, World Championship Grand Prix calendar due to its unsafe nature and being a risk for riders to partake in the event. And he wasn't the only one. There was a big group of riders that all shared this same opinion, but Reed was a bit of a leader amongst the riders on this topic, and there was a big walkout by a few riders and, and, and a refusal to compete, leading the FIM to remove the Isle of Man TT from the calendar permanently after the 1976 event. But more controversy followed Reed the year after, when in 1977, he went back to race the Isle of Man TT when it wasn't part of the World Championship calendar. The Formula One World Championship at the Isle of Man TT, which of course he did win a year after getting the Isle of Man removed from the World Championship calendar in 1976. This led to many considering Reed to be a bit of a hypocrite in that sense, but Reed always maintained that he never had an issue with people voluntarily wanting to go and put themselves at risk and race the TT, but no rider should be contractually obliged to turn up to an event as part of a World Championship calendar and put themselves at risk if they didn't want to. I refuse to ride because 
Not only did Count Augusta say that MVs wouldn't race there again, but I felt there was a, a lack of um, support and, and uh, consideration for the riders. And just the attitude of the organisers was, uh, you know, this is it, take it or leave it. It's a mountain circuit, the throttle goes both ways. Anyway, I didn't, um, didn't ride then for five years. Uh, and then the, the TT lost its World Championship status. And uh, I, I understood that they were paying a lot better sort of start money over or expense money. So often outspoken and always fast, Phil Reed belongs in the top tier of Grand Prix World Motorcycle Racing Champions. His successes and his character make him one of the most significant riders of all time. I wish I'd known more, more about Phil Reed as a character before. Now, obviously, you look back through your records when you want to decide who your favorite riders are of all time, and you just see lists of winners and losers and things like that. You see how many wins they've got, how many podiums. Don't always take into account what they may have brought to the sport as a character, the same way you do with the riders that are from your own era. But I thoroughly enjoyed looking back at the life and times of Phil Reed whilst researching this video. My condolences to the people who knew him best his family and friends. He was a fascinating man and it was an 83 years very well spent.